Okay, so in this section, we're going to look at how we calculate the measures of center, the mean and median, as well as the measures of spread, including the IQR range and standard deviation. But more importantly, we're going to learn when we should use which statistics. Like, when does it make more sense to use the mean versus the median? Or when does it make more sense to use the IQR versus the standard deviation? And so on. And this is actually the, the big, you know, like, crucial part of statistics. It's not about, you know, seeing if you can do these tedious algebraic calculations. It's about if you can think logically. So you want to be able to look at a given scenario and figure out what you should be doing and what calculations you should be, you know, what calculations you should be making for, um, for whatever, you know, whatever's going on in the problem. And then we're also going to look at how we make box plots and tie it together with the other graphs that we learned in the first two sections and use them to, you know, create numerical summaries for comparing, you know, sets of quantitative data. So, um, so, so we're starting off with, you know, something you probably already went over known as the mean. We also call the arithmetic average. And, you know, it's basically, you know, one of the simplest you know, equations for determining the measure of center. So as you probably know, to calculate the mean, you simply add up all the values in the data set and divide by however many there are. So if there were 10 values, you would divide the total by 10. Now, um, you need to make sure you become familiar with the notation that's gonna be used, so that way you don't get confused. So we like to use X bar, so an X with a line over it to represent the mean. And we like to use, you know, subscripts X1, X2, X3, all the way to Xn to represent, you know, values of individuals in a set of data. And N is typically common for the total number of individuals in a set of data. Also understand what sigma notation means. This is essentially adding all the, the XI values, X1, X2, X3, X4, all at XN as shown here up. Now, next, we have the median, which you probably also, you know, learned sometime in you know, your middle school life. And it's essentially the middle value in a set of data when it's an order. It can be an order from lowest to greatest or from greatest to lowest. Um, typically, we like to go in increasing order, so from lowest to you know, greatest. Now, the main thing you have to be aware of is if you have an odd number of values or an even number of values. If you have an odd number of values, let's say you have you know, five values, the median is going to be one of the data values. The median will be the third value. The way I like to, you know, advise you understanding this is just think of like a race. If you have, you know, you know, five people finish a race, you know, they're all ranked from one to five. It doesn't matter what their times are. It just matters, you know, where their place compared to, compared to each other. So if you have five people that finish a race, your median would be the third finisher. because three to the middle of five. Now, if you have an even number of people, you have to take the the average of those, the two middle values. So let's say you have like six people in the race. See, there's no middle value in six, you know, in six people, but you would take the middle of the third and fourth, and then you would basically add those values up and divide by two. But let's go over an example because that's always the best way to understand this stuff. So we're going to look at this example where we have data for, you know, the amount of fat and grams for these McDonald's fee sandwiches. You know, we're going anywhere from 29, 12, 24, nine, you know, and so forth. So we're gonna make a stem plot for this data. So um, start off and draw a vertical line and we need to make the stems. So our lowest value looks like it's nine. And let's keep in mind that nine, you can make a two digit number. You know, this is the same as like zero nine. So all these are two digits. So our stem will, will, you know, have to include this nine all the way to 43. So our stems will be the values zero, one, two, three, and four. So let's go ahead, let's, let's figure them out in order. So nine will go first. And again, don't forget the key. So let's make a key right here, key. Zero slash nine means nine grams.
means nine grams. Next we go, what we have an order of 12, followed by 19, so we go two, nine. So I've got 23 and then 24. 20, so we've got two 26s, 27 and 29 it looks like. 229s actually. And we got a 31 and a 43. Okay, so here's our stem plot. Now we're gonna find the mean of this set of data. So the mean, remember X bar is the total of the values. So we're gonna add these all up and divide by the number of values. And there's 12 of them. So we're gonna divide our total by 12. If you add them all up, you should get 298. 298 divided by 12 will give you about 24.83 repeatings. Now the median. So we have an even number of values. We have 12. So it's not going to be, be like one of the values necessarily. So again, think about like a race. You have 12 people finish a race. What would the middle finishes be? Now, it wouldn't be like the sixth person and wouldn't be the seventh. It would be the middle you can think of, of the sixth and seventh person. So let's look at the sixth and seventh values. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And seven. So we're talking about these two values, which coincidentally are the same. So the median will just be 26. But let's say, but let's just do the math for you know for sake, you know, just for practice. We would add to the 26 and 26 divided by two, and you get 26. So the median would be 26 grams, or the median would be 26 grams. Now part D. They're going to add this special heart attack max sandwich to 300 grams of fat. Uh, let's see what happens when you calculate the median and mean with this sandwich added. So let's look at the new mean. So the new mean, since we have another sandwich added, we're going to be dividing by 13. And we're simply going to add 300 to our total of 298. So we're gonna basically have 598 divided by 13. And we're gonna get 46 as, a, as our new mean. So 46. Now let's look at our new median. Now, if we have 13 values because we have the, you know, the new sandwich added, then we have an odd number of values. So the median can actually be included in the set of data because the middle value of 13 values would be the seventh value. Again, think of 13 runners finishing the race, the middle finisher would be the seventh place. Let me just write like the seventh. seventh order value. So, you know, would it actually just be that 26 again? It would just be, you know, this value, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it would actually just be the 26, it'd be the same as before. So part E, you know, it's asking how much the median and mean change with this additional sandwich. So that's what we're getting at in this problem. You can see that the mean changed dramatically by over 20, 20 grams, it's increased by about 21.16 grams. 
but the median didn't really change at all. Let's go ahead, let's write that down. Mean increased by about 21.16 grams. The mean remain the median remained the same at 26 grams. So like, why, why is that? Well, let's think about this. The mean is affected by algebra. It's affected you know, by this computation. So when you change the, the, not, or the numerator by a significant amount without really changing the denominator, we only change the denominator by one and the numerator by 300, that value really throws off you know, um, the overall proportion. So that's why it changed by so much, it almost doubled. But the median is not the median is not affected by any algebraic equation. It's affected, you know, by a position in the values. So the position of the values, because you know, in this case we're actually very close. These values are actually very close to one another. So even if you added like a value that was a thousand, it wouldn't change that much. So this is an example of what we call um, sensitivity to outliers. We say the mean is sensitive to outliers because it's significantly affected by it but the median isn't. So this is one advantage of the median and one weakness of the mean. So let's, let's go a little further into this so we can understand you know, how and when we should use the mean versus the median and vice versa. So when you're comparing the, the mean and median, when you have a roughly symmetric distribution, they're gonna be pretty close together. When it's exactly symmetric, they're gonna be exactly the same. Now, let's keep in mind, in real life, distributions are never perfectly symmetric. That's why we like to say roughly symmetric or about, but this is just a theory if they were, if it was. Now in a skewed distribution, the mean is gonna be pulled out in the direction of the long tail. So it's gonna be affected by those outliers. Because remember in a, in, a, in a skewed distribution, you're gonna have outliers, that's why we say it's sensitive to outliers. Now, in real life, some real situations where they like to use the median over the mean are when we're talking about incomes or home prices or college tuition. And if you guys ever like paid attention to like a newspaper or read an article dealing you know, with real estate, you probably notice that they mentioned the median home price or the median income. That's because saying the mean income would strongly you know, um, mislead people who are reading. Like for example, let's say like, let's say you have a professor you know, and his 50 students in a classroom and they wanna calculate the average income. Um, let's say all the students don't have a job. Let's say they all just are full-time students and they don't work at all. And professor, maybe, you know, big time guy makes $100,000 or something like that. If you were to take the mean income of that group, you know, you would have 100,000, you know, divided by, you know, you know, let's say if it was 20 students or 50 students, you know, you would have a mean income, you know, somewhere in the thousands. You know, if it was 50, you would have a mean income of, so I think, $2,000. Yeah, $2, but that wouldn't make sense because again, nobody in that class in that class makes any money. So that would again be misleading. But if you said median income, the median income would be zero because 20 of those students or those, those 20 other you know, individual students, they don't make any money. So it actually makes more sense to use the median in that case. So when we're talking about data to you know, get around this and be even more clear about you know, distributions, we like to use a measure of spread as well as a measure of center. Now the simplest measure of spread or variability is known as the range, which you probably have, you know, dealt with. And that's because it's just the difference between the largest and smallest value in a set of data. Now, 
We also like to create what are known as box plots to, you know, give us a sense of how a, a set of quantitative data is broken up, like where the, um, the, the percentiles lie. And you probably, again, maybe made these in middle school. And a box plot, you know, is made up of these five numbers. These five numbers are the minimum, the first quartile or Q1, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. So it's simply, you know, a box centered around the three values. So we can say like, um, this is Q1, this is the median, this is Q3. The maximum would be over here at this end. The minimum would be over at this end. That's the idea. Now, the, the lengths of each area don't have to be the same, but what per, the percent that they each contain is equal. They each contain 25% of the total data. So 25% between here and here, that's why we call it the first quartile. Then between here and here is, in, this is the next 25%, which is why we call it the median, or sometimes it's called the second quartile. The third quartile would be from here to here, the third 25 percentile, and the top 25 percentile will be from the Q3 to the maximum. Now, how do we calculate these? Well, first you have to make sure that your data is in order. It doesn't have to be an increase in order, but um, it's, usually, um, the, it's usually like the most uh, common way to go about it. We like to go from lowest to highest. So after the data is in order, determine the median. Just like how we did before, the middle value, if it's an odd number, or the average of the the middle values, if it's an even set of, if it's an even number of data values. Then we find the first quartile by essentially taking the median of the values below the median. So it's like the median of the of the median. So we only care about the values to the left in the median, and we look at the median of this half, and that will be Q1. And Q3 will be the median, so the values above the median, so the median of this half, so the, the median of the values above the median. And this middle box, I'm shading here, is also known as the IQR. And that's just simply the difference from Q3 to Q1. Okay, now, a rule for identifying outliers, because you know, up to this point, we just kind of been, you know, kind of suggesting or saying, you know, we, we think there's an outlier, or it doesn't seem like there's an outlier. Now we have an actual mathematical rule for you know classifying an outlier, which is gonna be that if a value lies more than 1.5 IQR units above Q3 or more than 1.5 IQR units below Q1, then we can say it's an outlier. Now, this isn't a strict rule in mathematics, but it's a common rule of thumb you'll see a lot in, in you know, most courses and most textbooks. Okay, so now let's actually do a practice problem because that's always the best way to get good at this stuff. So here we're gonna have the data um, from the previous McDonald's beef sandwiches problems that we, you know, we're working with. And it's already in increasing order. And we're gonna make a box plot for it. Then we're gonna calculate the range IQR and the quartiles. And then we're gonna figure out if there are any outliers. Now, so it's in order from lowest to highest. So we're good there. Now, since there's 12 values, the median is gonna be the middle of the sixth and seventh value, which you already found earlier. So the sixth and seventh value, you know, are these two 26s, so that the median will be right between these. And we know since they're the same, the median will be 26. Now, the first quartile, we find the median of these six values. And again, since there's an even number, we take the median of the third and fourth value, so the, the value in the middle of 19 and 23, and that's simply going to be 21. And then Q3 will be the middle of these six values, which would be between the 29s, which, you know, 
makes our lives a lot easier because it's just going to be 29. And the minimum would just be the lowest value here, 9. And the maximum would just be the highest value, 43. Okay, so now we just make a box plot and, you know, try to scale it the best we can to, you know, make it, you know, reasonably representative of this. So we have our lowest value at nine. And so we go out to, let's say 21 is over here, we'll say. I'll be the start of our box. This box is gonna go all the way to 29. So about eight units width wide. The median will be the middle of this box. Well, not the middle of this box, but the median will be somewhere in between 21 and 29. It's gonna be closer to 29, so maybe something like this. And then the max will be 43. So 14 away from here. So it's gonna be a little longer than this tail. Maybe like this, maybe like that. Now the range is just the distance from the minimum to the max. So the range is just 43 minus nine, which is just gonna be 34. Now the IQR is the length of this box here, distance from 21 to 28, which is, which is eight. We could just use the calculation just to make it clear. So we can use the 29 minus 21, and that'll be eight. Now, are there any outliers? So we're gonna have to use this 1.5 IQR rule. So let's first do 1.5 times the IQR. 1.5 times 8, which is 12. So the question is, are there values more than 12 units above 29? Or are there any values more than 12 units below 21? So let's, let's, let's write that out. So I'll use more than 12 units above Q3 again, remember it's 29, or values more than 12 units below 21. So again, we just think logically, if it, for a value to be more than 12 units above 29, it has to be at least, you know, has to be more than 41. So are there values more than 41, we could say? Or for this one, you could say more than 12 units below, below 21, so, or we could say less than nine. Are there values less than nine or more than 41? And here, you know, there are values more than 41 because we've got 43 right there. So we could say, you know, yes, 43 is an outlier. And are any values less than nine? Now, nine is our limit. It has to be less than nine. So we could say no. So we just got one value. One, we just got one value that we can say according to this rule that's going to count as an outlier. 